Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to create some uh, return address labels. So I had this question come up the other day. Basically, if I just want to create a sheet of return address labels, so basically it's going to be a sheet of the very same label that I could put in the top left corner of an envelope or something like that, so I always have my return address available. So I'm going to start from a blank Word document here. I'm going to be on the Mailings tab, but instead of worrying about the mail merge process, I'm going to head over to the Labels process. And for the address, this is where I would put in my own address. I'll go ahead and put in Personable Person. And I'll put in a fake address. And now you do need to know what labels you want. Now I picked, I have got 8167 selected for me just because before I turned on the recorder, I did a little bit of hunting over at uh, Amazon. I was just looking for some return address labels and that's kind of what they've got going on here. You can see there in the top left corner, that's what ultimately we're creating basically. And um, this is Avery code 8167. So when you're producing your labels in Word, you want to know what that Avery code is. It's right there on the corner of the package that you might get to. And there's dozens, hundreds of different kinds of label styles. So you need to know what the label code number is for whatever labels you are using. So I'm going to head back over to my Word document. And I've already got 8167 selected, but if it wasn't there, I would just click over here on this label option, and I could just scroll through and find what I was looking for. And if I was somewhere way off, when you're activated inside of this little uh, dialog box, you can just start to type out 816, and that didn't seem to find it, so let me just hit 8 again, 81, and 816. There we go. It starts to find it as you type in the keys and then I could easily find 8167 shipping la or address labels right there. So I'll go ahead and click on that, click OK. That's what I've got. And now I'm ready to produce a new document. I don't want to go right to print. I always want to look at the new document before printing. So I'm going to click New Document, and I'm going to get this big list of addresses. Now I can see that my font is just too big for this space, so I'm going to go ahead and select everything just by clicking the little Table Selector button in the top left corner. And that's what is this is, by the way. It's just a table to organize the arrangement of the labels. Um, so now that I've got that selected, I can just reduce the font size a bit so that they all fit on those particular labels. Now, once I've got this arranged, I still wouldn't print on my label sheet yet. What I would do is I would print one page just on a regular sheet of paper on the same printer that ultimately I'm going to use, and I would hold this up to my label sheet to make sure everything is lined up nice and neat, because you don't want to waste the, uh, the more expensive label sheets. Once I felt like everything was lined up nice and neat, then I have to go through the process of putting in the label paper into my printer in the best way. And the best way, usually for a laser printer, is going to be how can you get it so that the paper doesn't have to go through as many rollers. So there's most laser printers will have an input feed and a secondary output feed right in the back so the paper can go straight through. So once you get a feel for how your printer is going to print, then once I'm satisfied, I would go ahead and print a sheet on some label paper, see how that looks, and then print as many as you need. But that is how you can create a full sheet of the same address labels.